Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another great edition of Topic Time with Harrison Young. Uh, the month of August is wrapping up fast. Uh, we're coming into September. Where did the summer go? But it's always heated up in my Topic Time shows every week. So on we go. We've got a great show tonight, another one. We've got to read the underwriters, and then we will proceed with the show. So we got Auto Country, King of the Used Car in Abington. We got Big Lee's Automotive Repair Shop also in Abington. We got Above All Fitness in Rockton. We got Johnny Macaroni's Restaurants at three locations, two in East Bridgewater, one in Halifax. We got Chapin Sheds in Whitman. We got John's Greenhouses and Florist Shop in Brockton. We got MDI Auto Brokers and Repairs in Whitman, home of the fully certified used car. We got Dancer's Dream Supplies for Dancing in Whitman. Uh, they make shopping a dream come true. And we got good old T. Martini and Sun Floor Covering in Abington. I want to thank you guys very much. And now we will start the show officially. Here we go. Okay, again, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Topic Time with Harrison Young. Um, so I have another great guest. Another, this young lady is an actress, uh, cool beret she's got on here. And she's, uh, she belongs to a theater group down, I believe, in the Fall River area. Is that no, correct? No, um, actually, right. um, I live in Fall River, but um, the theater group I work at is um, based in Warwick right now, and we also do a lot of work in Providence. Okay, so we're to Rhode Island. Yes. Okay, so is it two locations in those two states? And that, I mean, in that state in Rhode Island, one in Warwick, one in Providence? Um, well, no, it's, um, we, well, we used, we started out in Providence. We had a collaboration with one group, and then we got a collaboration with another group in Warwick. But we have, like, our place that we rehearse and that we do all our stuff in Warwick. But because we don't have our own theater at, like, physical, like, stage, yep. we, 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 what we do is we pick up, like, venues from around Providence like we'll add like they'll get a theater to ho kind of host our play or okay. our performance okay that's awesome I mean you, and I assume you get a, you get quite a few you probably get more all the time now where do you where exactly uh, how do you how do you are you want you're one of the actresses in this group right yes okay and I, do you um do you do any PR for them too as well obviously you, you got you plugged it pretty well just now but I mean in terms of you know, well, I don't, I'm not, I'm not like, I don't have an official position doing any PR, but I do, prom do, I do promote uh, the group a lot, like, when we're doing something, I always like to share something, like, okay. if there's, like, just to be, like, supportive of the whole thing, and... That's good. Like, I, that's, ba my Facebook page is basically all about the group. I don't really do too much other stuff on it. Okay, well, that's, well, right there, that's PR, that's good. So, you, that's the idea, you want to get yourself out there, and you want more people to know what you're doing and where they can find you and yeah. uh, opportunities. All right, well, let's talk about you specifically. You're the one I'm interviewing, and that's great. And, and, and as, you know, as we go along, we'll cover more and more of the projects that you've done, both within this theater group and prior to that, and, what, and then what the future looks like. So what I want you to do now is, like I do with all my guests, I try to find out what people were like as, as kids and how they got to be where they're at. You know, you're in your mid-20s now, I based, based on what I've seen, looks, you look about it, like mid-20s. And you obviously, had a, you know, you're, you, love, you love to act and, you, you know, you love to... Put yourself out there for the world to see. Yeah. So, talk, so talk about what you were like growing up, and you know how how did that how does that lead to where you're at today? And then I'll if I have any questions, I'll flip them at you. Go ahead. Well, I was born in '95. Okay. So, but I feel like I did get to have the full '90s kid experience because we did not have internet in the house at all until 2002, okay. and I wasn't allowed to use it until 2007. Wow. So I got the full yeah, experience. Just a quick question. Of I'm like, just wondering why. I mean, if you don't, if you're not going to tell, if you don't have, if that's oh, personal. just because I mean, before I got into all this stuff, like before the acting, and before at some point I used to like to write and okay. all that stuff. I used to be, like when I got got into computers, I got really into computers. Like I was like. Hit, like I was like, oh, I think it might be cool to be a hacker. So, um, oh, you know, okay. like that wasn't going to go over too well. No, of course not. Okay, so they were trying to protect you. That makes yeah. sense. I got you. All right, good. 
Okay, yeah, and plus, you know, sometimes, you know, the internet when it broke in at the beginning was, was kind of uncertain. There was a lot, you know, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong. There still is, even today. Yeah. Obviously. Um, it's a lot, but When but, I first used to yep. spend time on it, I was really into, like, computer programs and how they worked and things like that. I actually do, I have designed websites and stuff in the past, and I've done graphic design in the past, not for money or anything, but, like, when I, like, used to put, like, books out, I would design my own cover and that kind of thing. Books out? You mean do you write books? No, it was in the past. I don't do it anymore. Okay. All right. Well, all right. So after... That was, that was like just try, trying to see if I could earn money with it. I understand. Listen, we all got to test the waters and find out what our strengths are. That makes yeah. perfect sense. So fast forward. All right. 2007, you were 12, obviously. Yeah. Your timeline. You, so at that time, you were an adolescent and you and you, and then you were using... You were online and you were... And I'm, my guess is that you you made a lot you made the most of it. So what did you do with that in terms of getting into acting or, or anything? Well, in the I wasn't right? anywhere near acting at you that weren't. point. Okay. Actually, the following year after that, I was in I was getting political online. Cool. Okay. So, so that that, that, didn't, that didn't go over too well either. Why not? Well, I mean, I mean be, uh, because of, because of, because I know being political, you could you could ruffle a lot of feathers, right? Yeah, and I mean, I I I would I was very anonymous about my my identity still at that age. I didn't get social media really until high school. It wasn't even really a thing at the time. Right, right. And plus, I wasn't really popular at school. I had been diagnosed with Asperger's in first grade. Well, guess so what? You're in great company because I have Asperger's too. I did read that. Right. So I'm, I, I'm I, proud I, of it. Just so I, you know, because. Yeah, I I don't too. let right. We should be proud of it. We we, we turned it in our advantage. We don't we, we don't let it you know uh, throw us back. We let we help us lurch us forward. Yeah. And so we. I do feel very I do, special people. Yeah. Okay. We, we yeah. both know that. Okay. I credit it with a lot of my success, with a lot of, of my a lot of my dedication, that focus towards getting the thing that I'm working on or that I want at the time. The only thing I can't get myself to focus and be good at is math. Well, d does that bother you? Um, sometimes, but other times it's like, why do I care? Because I didn't like it either, so... Well, I mean, math, to some degree you have to know some math. You don't have oh, well, to I know the math that I need to pay my credit card bill, so that's good. Well, that is very good. So basically, you know enough math to get you, get you, get you going, get, you know, get, get yeah, you the day. Yeah, it was more like the, when you get into, like, the really complicated... Type stuff well, like trigonometry uh, and calculus and that. Well, I don't know what. I didn't get to that, that, but when it started getting to be like the end of algebra, getting ready to go into that, I was geometry. Done. Yeah, I, I went through the same thing in high school, so I know yeah. what you, I know exactly what it's like. Um, but now, so how did so? What did this all lead you into acting? And then we're going to talk about other things you might have done, including writing, and because you know, I want to get back to what you were doing in the internet. That, that sounds very interesting, although even though you, you, they were trying to put the kibosh on it for, to protect you, but it still sounds interesting. But in the meantime, let's talk about the acting aspect of it. What, how did that come to be? Well, this is kind of a complicated story because when I was a young kid, that was or that was like one of the first things I wanted to do. Okay. I got like a I got a TV as a gift and stuff for like as a young kid, like my third birthday or something. Right. And I remember like watching TV. It was like a grape juice commercial or something, and okay. I was just like pointing to the TV, and I was like, "That's what I want to do." And my parents were like. And then, but it's like, I didn't really revisit it again for a long time because everybody's like, oh, that's just a fantasy. You can't really do that. And then in high school, they had a really great theater program at my high school, but I was too nervous to audition. And then I ended up not participating until the last year. I had done one other play in middle school, but, other, but at that point, it was just those two plays and a student film for my forensic science class because I also considered becoming a medical examiner or a doctor at one point. Okay, well, that's good. So again, you were I was all the over the place. That, but that's good. I mean, it's obvious that you, you know you got your feet wet, as they say, and you and, yeah. and you found. And it sounds to me like to this point, you found what you really love doing. And and I always say everything happens for a reason. So so a vision you had back in th when you were three, pointing at that private. I'm guessing it was one of those goofy juice commercials. Set you set your you know set your wings in motion a little bit, but it took a while for them to really start flapping. Yeah, that's pretty pretty profound. I should write it down. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. But that's that's what it sounds like happened. But in the meantime, in between when you were three and now, 
a lot of things, you know, you've, you've tried different things. You you know, you've tried, and tried what you liked and you found what you didn't like and you kept at it and then you found yourself in this theater group. And now yeah. that's where you're at today. Did, did you go to college at all? Um, I did not. You did not, okay. You, I mean, you're still young yet. You could do it. I've thought about it and yep. I, st I sometimes you, I still consider it, but I really struggled socially in school and with an an anxiety. Right. And yep. it was kind of like, I, it was like, I always had the feeling that school itself really wasn't for me in a way, just because it wasn't like a place where I felt like I belonged at all. And I, it just the whole environment of it is like, I mean, sometimes just walking felt in, like an outsider. Yeah. I, know, I know the feeling, believe me. An outsider and the pressure of the academics, because like being on the spectrum, I'm bright, but it's like there were always those little little struggle areas, and I would really push myself a little too far at times to make sure I aced those areas too, because it would just bother me to no end to have straight A's in one class, in every class, and then have the one class that I didn't do well in. It's the OCD. I have it too, so I get it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. Asperger's and OCD kind of go together, but yeah. that's but you, but but that's good because it it shows you focused on things that you that, of, of being but successful. I, I actually l didn't end up auditioning for theater and for things like that in high school. For uh, one of the main reasons was that I thought it would interfere with my grades too much, and now I kind of look back and it was like I ended up deciding not to go to college, and I ended up doing something different with my life, and I probably could have maybe benefited from letting go of that anxiety a little bit. But it's but the that is in the past, and I do feel like everything does happen for a reason and that I might not have gotten to where I am if I hadn't taken those steps, even if it didn't make sense. Okay. So I kind of still credit all of those decisions and all of those things with where I am. Well, that's good because now, I mean, right now you're, you know, you're at the, it seems like from what I'm here, from what I'm hearing, when you're telling me you're at the top of your game at this point. But that doesn't mean that there aren't going to be other things that you're going to be doing down the line that are going to be more more profound than what you've done now, or more more satisfying to you and the people that you, you know in your life. And I think you will. I just get that sense about you. You're obviously outgoing. You're ambitious. And here you are. You're you know somebody never went to college. Somebody that's you know. I'm actually one of like I'm actually essentially the only person in my group who did not go to college. That makes it even more special. That's incredible. No, but talk about the group now. Talk, what's the group like? Who are the, who are the people in the group? And well, it's called Spectrum. How did you get into it's it? It's called. Okay, I'll start with that. Okay, go ahead. Well, I had been at a really um a really bad place at one point. Okay. Probably a, l a little starting a little over a year ago, and I was in a I was really kind of down down in the dumps as you might say yep. and I decided that I was going at the time I had wanted to be a screenwriter okay. and I had just been rejected from a screenwriting um, seminar or class program whatever from a huge network like a to like a top four uh, TV network type of deal and I was really sad about it I had been rejected from a film school and I so I thought about I was just like because I had heard about I had heard a lot of good things about Trinity Rep in Providence right. and stuff. So I had I just decided I was like, well, I'm gonna sign up for an acting class with them, and I'm gonna s just see what happens. Because maybe to be a screenwriter, I should probably know what a character should be and what an actor should be to get into the character. But then when I took it, it was like, forget screenwriting, I like this better. There you go. I ended up taking a couple more of those after, but I, but by then I was already, in, I had someone from that theater had introduced me to this group, Spectrum Theater Ensemble. Cool. Okay, so you found someone that, that thought, thought enough for you to do that. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So that so what happened after with no when, after that introduction what how did how did you go with that? What happened with it? Well, we got in I got in touch with the people in charge over email and things like that and at some point I went in to meet them and I became a member. 
I've done a few things with them. One of them is they had written an original play okay. the first year of them because they, I, they, the, the, the majority of the people in the group have been there a year longer than I have. Okay. So they had done this this original piece as like a stage reading or as a skit before, and but. This time around, they decided to cast me in the female lead, cool. and it was real, real. It was a big challenge. I for for the first time I did uh, the first time I did it. It was a staged reading that we had to prepare for that I did at Brown University's Leeds Theater. Cool. So that was really great. It's a beautiful campus too. Yes, very beautiful campus. And then we all, I also participated in uh, some skits that we did where I had to perform a couple of my monologues at Burnside Park. Wow. And well, hold up a second. Monologues. Monologues that you wrote or that they... Mo no, monologues okay, from this play. play. They, gotcha. were, they, were, they were like a page each. It was, wow. it was very okay. challenging to memorize that. Of course it was. That. Of course yeah. it was. And then um, recent, the most recent thing, it's actually still going on there. Today, tomorrow, and the day after is the last three days of the performance. But I was cast as an understudy for two roles, and I was given the opportunity yep. to perform for a preview weekend. So I did three performances. I do get compensated for my work at this group, which is great because I know a lot of people in the community who have worked with many theaters and they've said that a lot of them don't give compensation so that's great well, you, you, i'm glad you paid her. I, I love it that is so cool that is awesome so you, you're living your dream right now and you and it's in, only a, gonna in, get in a way the only thing is is that when we take little breaks from in between i get a little i get like antsy because i just want to see everybody again like it feels like i actually have friends for the first time in my life that's got to feel great because i because I'm, I'm almost 60 years old and i still have no friends i'm serious i'm well i that's not true <laughs> that's this is that's a show for another day um but but I, but I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm only, I'm only saying that. I'm being silly. I'm, I'm just no. I know how it feels when you think, you, when you don't feel you have friends, and then suddenly you do. It's overwhelming. Well, so maybe not. It's not like for the first time in my life. I mean, I had, I had one friend. Okay. In K to eight, and then I had one friend in high school. So well, I. Well, that's good. Yeah. If you have one, and one I, friend, and, I'm, way and, than and I'm still friends with one of those friends. That's good. I mean, that's okay. Listen, but the other, but the thing you have to remember is too. I mean, I'm, and I, and you know, I always try to give advice to my guests that'll help them out. In your case, you know, being that I can, I can relate to what you go, where you're going, where you're coming from, because I'm in that same situation. I, I got to tell you, you got to, you got to live for yourself. As, as awesome as you know it is to have a friend, you got to, you got to, you got to satisfy your own needs and whatnot before you worry about you know what other people think of you. Because oh yeah, but what's great about this is it's like we're all working together to right. create this piece, these pieces of art, these great pieces of art. Yep. And it's like like all that friendship and all that like all all the ways in which we all work together is like it goes into the final product. Well, exactly, and it sounds to me like they, they they love having you on board and you love being on board. Yeah. So basically, you have a friendship based on common common achievements with them, and that's yeah. the best kind there is, really, because that can lead to other things, better friendships, more people will get to know who you are now, and then. And ultimately, you'll probably you'll make great impressions on people that'll come back to you know really enhance your life eventually, so, and hopefully the show will. Help well, I know you that th this particular show got some great reviews in the Providence Journal and go. Broadway World, and some great play, some great online publications. Okay, um, speaking now, you, did you do any writing at all? I mean, I, I, some, I get a sense that you like you have an imagination too, correct? Yeah. And do you ever? Do I don't. Ever? I don't like to talk too much about my writing. Okay, that's fine. Well, I did. I, it was something that I tried doing because I, I. I was hoping to save up some money, but I. And it's just like it, people ended up just downloading my books for free and then uploading them on pirated websites for free. And wow. It was just okay. Like, well, nah. You know what you were doing then, so. It, so it was like it, it was like it was so, it was another passion that I had growing up as a kid, but as an adult, I kind of didn't. Have have the same kind of talent as a writer that I had as a kid, if you know what I'm saying. I kind of do. Like yeah. I was, I was a great writer 
compared to my classmates, but as an adult, I hadn't caught up. Okay, I understand, right. But but then again, it sounds to me like right, it's not really a thing right now anyway. You're, you're perfectly happy doing your acting. So what I want you to tell me now is uh, tell me a little about the current roles you've been playing. And then, you know, you got the lead role in something, right? Well, the, I played a character named Whitney who is a non a, a woman on the autism spectrum who is nonverbal. Okay. So I uh, there there were actually a lot of dialogue pieces in the in the play that were actually done on like a vo like an, a voice to text or a text to voice. I don't know how which way it was. I know what you're getting at. Though. Yeah. yeah. And the, but the monologues I still would say because it was almost like I don't know how you describe it really. It's like it's like it's almost like it's her inner thoughts okay. for those pieces. So you're doing well, that's kind of like almost like nonverbal improv, right? Well, in this well, this character actually wants to be a comedian, and is and that so that and I I'm, I I'm, well, I've always been a very comic person, so okay. ch so channeling this character was actually a whole lot of fun. It's great. Speaking of, all right, saying that you're a comic person, have you ever tried doing stand up anywhere? Or would you I haven't it? done that, but I would totally consider it. You, you know, you look like you ever get this Tia Leone, the actress. Oh yeah, I'm a huge fan. Well, you look just like her. You should be, that's a flat, that's a compliment. She's beautiful. Cool, there you go. Okay. Well, and, and you would probably, if you, you, I mean, you would, the only thing you'd have to do is you might, you, well, here's the other thing. The opportunities for doing stand-up are, are double-edged because you can either write stuff down and try to wing it, get up with an open mic, and I do interview a lot of comedians. Well, I feel like I'd probably offend a lot of people if I did stand-up. Well, let me ask you something. You know who Sarah Silverman is, the comedian? Oh, yeah, I know Sarah Silverman. She's my cousin. I did read that somewhere. I, I, I research everyone before I, like, oh, before I do something, I, I do good. the research. Okay, well, she, she, she offends a lot of people. Does, does that matter? Is she still not one of the best comedians around? Well, I've heard rave reviews. There you go. And that, that my hunch is that if you gave it a shot, you could get those kind of reviews. I'm, I'm, I'm also a very huge, a very huge fan of um, Kate McKinnon. Oh, Kate McKinnon is crazy. I love her. I know Kate McKinnon. Yeah, she's hilarious. Okay, right. And, and Kate McKinnon and, and, now, and, now, and now Fallon, Fallon Susan. Why not? Make it a threesome. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know about that. If I would take comedy as a full-on career, I mean... To, no, no, I'm, give, I'm, giving, I'm not saying that. I'm saying there are opportunities out there. You like to oh, get... Oh, yeah. I, well, I've heard of Improv Boston. Yeah. That's, so that would be, that would be a, like a pipe dream for me. Give it a shot. Or just start, start small with an open mic. Bring some of your, your people from your theater group. Go to a, go to a club. So what, so what a, lot of, a lot of comedians do is they set up... They actually... They, they plant people in the audience... You know, it's kind of their, you know, their, their, uh, their benefactors to take care of them when they're up on stage so that they feel more comfortable. And then, then you get an idea, you watch people that you know, if they're laughing at what you're saying, sometimes that rubs off on the strangers too, and you could make them laugh too. But you'd have, but that, this is something you might want to try, in the, you know, sometime in the near future. Just, just oh, fly. it's something I've been told I should do a lot. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going along. And I'm on right that now, right now, I'm, right well. now, I'm going along with whatever flows my way because I, I just love any type of acting, any type of artistic endeavor. I'm really just down for that. I'm down to explore it and okay. try it. And I mean, I tried releasing a song. I wouldn't recommend finding it or downloading Speaking, it because right, it's I, terrible. I was going to ask you when you say releasing a song, singing. Playing a music you know, instrument. Well, what I, I kind of just came up with these terrible. This was like way back. Like I came up with these terrible, like teen angst type lyrics. Okay. When I was in high school, and then I just went nuts on Garage Band. Okay. And then oh, I, know I Garage Band. And then sure, I it's a great, because great it, it, it's like you fake the instruments with the computer, and right. then I just put it out there, and I, I found some site that releases it onto iTunes and all that, and it was just like. I wish I could take it down, but once it's out there, it's out there. Really? Okay. Well, why did you want to take it down? Well, because I'm not a very good vocalist. Like I don't. Oh, I, oh, I'm okay. not like I don't. I'm not in tune or anything. Okay. But you know, but sometimes that could that could go in that could go in to be to being funny. I know. I don't know how if your intentions were to be funny. Sounds to me like your intentions were to just be expressive about what you were feeling, and well, it actually, the intentions was to, the actually wind. the intentions was to test the site that I was, 
that I had found to release music on because it had been something from way back from way back in high school, but I actually was published it in 2017 because that was when I wanted to try to see how that site worked and this okay. was like the test song. Cool. And then it's like, uh oh, I can't get the test song back. Well, why can't you get it back? I mean, oh, you said you wanted for, to pull for, it from. Forgot from the my internet. password. Oh yeah, that's no good. Well, okay, but you know what? I wouldn't. You know, this is a long shot. I'm going to take a stab, but my I wouldn't be surprised if someday somebody. I mean, let me see, let me ask you this: If somebody sees that online and they get an notes from you, oh yeah. Okay, someday at some point you you may get like a ship in a bottle with a little piece of paper in it saying, "Hey, I saw I saw something online. It was really funny that you." Are you Fallon Souza? Did you do this? And then it, will, it, will be, it might be a little CD of that, of a DVD of you that they made up and thought it was <laughs> worth sending back. Somehow it find, but they don't, they don't know where you're from, so they send it on the. Well, they put it really in the bottle. Are you anticipating like the technology apocalypse? People are going to be putting letters in like and, yeah. bottles and throwing them like in the ocean again. Like in the song by the Police, uh, "Message in a Bottle," a little before your time from 1982. Yeah, but, that's before my time. Well, guess what? We're down to the final five minutes of the show. Ooh, we made it go okay. by. So what I want you to do, like I said, like I, what I always ask every guest to do is to give shouts out to people that are going to see it because a lot of people are. And that include you can start with your parents because they're right here. But you also might want to give shouts out to the people in your theater group and, you know, anyone else you can think of. And then we'll wrap the show up. Well, yes, I would, I would definitely like to thank my parents for keeping me sane some of the time. Okay. And I would like anybody who sees this to visit... S T E N S E M B L E dot org, S T Ensemble dot org okay. to check out Spectrum Theater Ensemble and everything that we do. That's that's awesome. And if you want, what we can do is when we put the graphics up, we can put that under your name. That Spectrum Theater dot com. Do you want us to do that? It's, so well, that's the not website. the actual link. I would have to. No, no, I know that, but that'll show people how they can get it. Yeah. It's up to you. Okay. Well, yeah, I would. I would like that. Okay, then we'll do it. Um, so going forward, what is you? What does the rest of the, like the year look like for you? Here we are, almost in the, the fall. The rest of the year for me is. Um, I mean, I'm not completely sure yet. I, okay. I, I'm still going. I still go to auditions, so I always have things that I'm waiting back on and things like that. Okay. I, they, I mean, there's there's things that are supposed to be going happening going forward with the company I mean obviously always, always things like that are things you don't talk about until they're happening that's fine then don't talk about them okay <laughs> well and I, and I also this I'd like to if I get a lot of guests for my show from word of mouth so if you have people that, in your theater group that see the show and want to come on please have them hit me up I'd love to interview them uh, I will definitely do that. Well, so I, I hope you had a good time with me tonight. I did. I had a very good time. And I hope you covered as much stuff as we could cover in the half hour and, you know, the complicated stuff and the simple stuff. Yeah. Well, everything's simple and complicated at the same time. That's so. exactly right. You know, it takes it takes people like us to understand that and appreciate it. So. Okay. All right. Well, on that note, we're going to wrap the show up. You, you ready? It's up to you if you want to snap along. But... I'm I'll try. All right. Well, folks, thanks for watching Talk of Time. More great episodes to follow. See you next time. Here we go. There you go. Oh, I love that. I've never seen anyone snap like that. That's original. <laughs> I'm snapping like someone who doesn't know how. That's, but it's, that's what makes it original. That's the beauty of it.